horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. It would take a whole shelf full of spices and special flavorings if your mom started out to make a honey spice on her own, and lots of extra work, too. But with Betty Crocker's wonderful honey spice cake mix, everything she needs is right there in the package, all blended and ready to go. All she has to do is add water and two fresh eggs. Mmm, and what a cake. Why, a great big Betty Crocker honey spice cake disappears in nothing flat around our house. You just can't stop eating it. And I know once your family finds out how good Betty Crocker honey spice cake is, they'll make quick work of everyone your mom turns out. But she won't mind. They're quick work for her, too. So easy to bake. And they always turn out perfect. Betty Crocker promises that. So have mom put Betty Crocker honey spice cake on her grocery list today, huh? You'll be glad she did. And so will your whole family. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Last three months, Otto, there have been several holdups and robberies down this way. A small outlaw gang seemed to be operating here, yet they managed to avoid capture. Oh, we're not far from town now, Kimosabe. Well, it's time for us to find a temporary campsite. After that, we'll concentrate on picking up the trail of those outlaws. Let's head for those cottonwoods over there, Toto. Come on, Get them up, Scout. Later that afternoon, Lewis Krebs rode to the small ranch he owned outside of town. He was concerned when he discovered that the man Tom hadn't arrived. About half an hour later, he and the others heard Tom stopping outside the bunkhouse. Well, there's Tom now. I told him and the rest of you not to hang around town. You should have been here long ago. Uh, listen here, Tom, where have you been? You left the bank some time ago. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I brought some news for you. Well, I passed close to a cottonwood grove and stopped at a stream to water my horse. I saw two men turn in from the main trail. And they didn't see me. What about them? One of them wore a black mask. I headed into a gully till they went past. They were talking to making camp in that grove. Hmm. I could use two more gunslingers. Maybe they might be interested in joining with us. Oh, huh? forget them. We got enough to share with already. There's four of us and you. In spite of that, if I want them to Hold on, boss. No use arguing about them. You couldn't get them to join the gang. Why not? When I first saw them, when they stopped in the grove, I heard that masked man say, Whoa, Silver. Then he called the Indian who was with him, Toto. I remembered both of them from the time when I was with the gang in Arizona. They're on the side of the law. And the masked hombre is called the Lone Ranger. Uh, the Lone Ranger? I've heard of him. Yeah, and so have I. You must be slipping, Krebs, to get those two on our trail. Shut up. That masked man hasn't anything on us. I'm a respectable businessman who owns a small ranch. You are my ranch hands. Let him or anyone else make something out of that. He's smarter than you think, Krebs. 
And for one thing, we'd better give up the idea of robbing that stage tomorrow. Yeah, we'll go right ahead with our plan. Now, wait a minute, boss. I reckon you don't understand. come. Don't underestimate me. What do you mean? You said those two men pitched camp in that grove, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. That means they'll stay there tonight. It should be a simple matter for you to wait until after dark, and they'll be sleeping, then to sneak up on that camp and finish them off. You're handy with a gun, and two quick shots will do the job. Right, Maybe you've got an idea there, boss. And whatever happens, head for town afterwards and mix with a crowd to lose your trail. Later, come on out here and report to us. All right, I'll do it. After tonight, we won't have to worry about any interference from the Lone Ranger. That evening, Tonto spent a few hours in town then returned to the camp to report that there was no news. The Lone Ranger and Toto rolled into their blankets to get a good night's rest and were soon sleeping. The moon was bright, and as they slept, there was nothing to indicate the danger that crept toward them as the outlaw Tom cautiously made his way on foot through the grove with his gun ready. But the sleeping men were not entirely unguarded. The great horse Silver raised his sensitive nose and caught the outlaw scent. The intelligent stallion pawed the ground restlessly and gave a warning whinny. The lone ranger stirred slightly, then opened his eyes. Tonto. Ah. Uh, me hear Silver give one. Be ready to move quickly when I get the word. Up. Me we're be ready. The masked man and the Indian lay still, but their eyes moved to take in the surroundings. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger nudged Tonto and whispered. I see a figure outlined on the edge of the clearing. Over there. Uh, let me see him. We'll spring up and move apart at the same time, throwing shots around his feet. Now! Uh-huh. Going back to the trees. Come on. Uh-huh. <coughs> him riding away fast. Him plenty surprised. We'll get Silver and Scott and pick up his trail. All right, let's go. Uh-huh. Me wonder why him sneak up on camp. He had a gun in his hand, Tonto. Either he followed you from town tonight, or he saw us make camp here earlier. Isn't that right? We'll follow his trail and see where it leads. All right, let's saddle the horses and get started. Meantime, the outlaw Tom rode hurriedly toward town. Get him, man. Come on. Get him, boy. Get him. The sudden move by the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been totally unexpected. And since a bullet had nicked the heel of his boot, Tom had left hurriedly. He finally arrived in town and stopped at the hitch rack in oh, front of oh, the cafe. Oh, 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 oh. Then he entered. As Tom approached the bar, he noticed the sheriff standing there staring at his boot. Acting on impulse, Tom spoke. I see you staring at my boot, Sheriff. Glad I found you here. Why, what happened, Tom? Well, I was riding in from Mr. Krebs' ranch with a couple of owls who tried to jump me. I lit out along the trail with them shooting at me. One bullet clipped my boot heel. A couple of owl hoots, you say? Yeah, yeah. One wore a black mask, and the other was an Indian. I thunder maybe they belong to the gang that's been operating in this vicinity. Yeah, I'm sure of it. If you get a posse together, you can grab them. I'll round up some men right away and start out after that masked man and Indian. Aided by the bright moonlight, the Lone Ranger and Tonto carefully studied the ground until they picked up the trail of the outlaw Tom. Soon they were riding along the trail toward Boomville. Look, Kimasabi, many riders coming. Yes, we'll turn off into that arroyo until they pass. Come on, sir. Let's go. Come. Might be some cowpokes going home from town. Ah. It better than not see us. The day go by, we'll continue on to town. Meanwhile, the sheriff and the posse yeah, yeah. moved along the trail in the moonlight. As they rounded a bend, a deputy pointed and spoke. Yeah. Look, Sheriff. Two riders outlined against the sky coming over that rise ahead. Yeah, I can't make them out from here. When they get close, we'll stop and ask them if they saw... 
Hey, they've turned off the trail and rode down into the Arroyo. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Those hombres must have caught sight of us coming. The way they ducked out of sight before we could get a close look at it means they might be the man we're hunting. Sure. Right, right. What do we do, Sheriff? We'll ride on and act like we didn't see him. When we get to the place where they turned off, we'll grab our guns and surprise them. What if they aren't the masked men in Indian cribs the ranch hand told you about? They'll have to explain why they act so suspicious. But if they are the ones we're hunting, don't let them get away. Even if we have to fill them with lead. All right. Now, let's get going. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and do, do, do an okay. Okay. That goes for the star wherever you are. Take Barbara Ann Scott, figure skating champion from the Northland. Watch her on this one. Barbara Ann's good. Now, there is a champ who's a real Wheaties fan. Sure helps to keep the gal up on her toes. A guy, too. Take Bob Lemon, who pitches a lot of ball for the Cleveland Indians. Lemon knows what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. Gosh, no wonder the champs of tomorrow are eating Wheaties today. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. Now to continue. The masked man and the Indian sat quietly in their saddles down in the arroyo as they waited for the riders to pass. The Lone Ranger spoke in a low voice as they approached on the trail. There be passes in a minute, Toto. Am I right? Oh, 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 oh. Preach, both of you. Do as he says, Toto. Uh-huh. That's the match. I'm red Indian. We'll go down into the Arroyo. Come on, boy. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, 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 oh. We're not outlaws, if that's what you think, Sheriff. You're wearing a mask, aren't you? That's enough for me. If you let me explain, you I... You can't explain away the fact that you and that Indian jumped an army back up the trail. He came to town and told us all about it. He's got a nick boot heel to prove it. Sure. Yeah. Keep him covered, boys. I'll ride close and take their guns. Right. Get up there. Get up. As the sheriff moved his horse alongside the Lone Ranger, the masked man waited tensely. Then, as the lawman reached toward him, the Lone Ranger, in a lightning-like move, dropped a hand to his holster and whipped out a gun, jabbing it into the sheriff's side. Read, Sheriff. Be quick about it. You booked a gun at the sheriff. Moved like lightning. Now, what are the men to toss their guns into the bushes? No, by thunder, I... Go ahead, tell them. We better do what he says, Sheriff. He might plug you. I might. Well, I guess he's got me, man. Yeah. Toss your guns away, like he said. That's mine. I'll throw yours for you. We'll trail you, mister, next time shoots you on sight. That's right. All right, let's go, Toto. Monsieur, let him up. After escaping from the posse, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode at a gallop for some time. Finally, they pulled rein after they had covered their trail by riding in a shallow creek for some distance. Oh, 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 oh. Well, now we lose posse. What we do, Kimasabi? I still want to tail the man who came to our camp tonight. Ah, uh, but posse cover tracks a man we follow when them come up trail. The sheriff spoke of a man who went to town and reported we held him up. He must be the same one we were trailing. That's right. I understand the man's boot had been nicked by one of our bullets. We go to town and locate him. That good idea. Posse did not come back to town for a long time, maybe. That's what I'm counting on. The masked man and the Indian reached town and rode along behind the buildings in the shadows. They stopped in back of the cafe, and the Lone Ranger waited while Toto went to the front and entered. A short time later, Toto returned. I'm sorry. Me see fella in cafe with part of boot heel shot away. Good. We'll leave the horses here while we go across from the cafe in the shadows and watch for him to come out. Let's go. 
The Lone Ranger and Tonto waited until they saw the man Tonto had seen leave the cafe and mount his horse at the hitch rack. All right, we got Silver and Scout and follow him. Come on. Uh, you think he belonged to Outlaw Gang? It's possible. He lied about us to the sheriff so the posse would hunt us. When he tried to surprise us at camp tonight, we were in the shadows and so was he. Isn't that right? He had no time to observe my mask or to see that you were an Indian. Isn't that right, but him tell sheriff about mask man and Indian. Exactly. He must know who we are. He wants us out of the way. That's what gives me the idea. He may be one of the outlaw gang. Well, Maybe that right. Let's start after him. Easy, said he'd be Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Silver, Scout. Silver, 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 the outlaw Tom rode directly to the Krebs ranch, and putting his horse in the corral, he entered the bunkhouse where Krebs and the three others were waiting. Well, Tom, did you finish them? No. From the looks of your boots, seems like they almost crippled. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up, Fred. This is nothing to laugh about. Now they'll be on their guard. Tell us what happened, Tom. Briefly, Tom told about his visit to the Lone Ranger's camp and the surprise result. Then he told about talking to the sheriff. Right now, the sheriff and a posse are out hunting for that masked cowboy and the Indian. I say the wise thing to do is to lay off that state job tomorrow. What? And lose $12,000 in cash? Don't be loco. I say we take the chance and go ahead with the holdup. How is that masked man and the Indian going to interfere if they don't know our plans? You four men are going to hold up that stage tomorrow as we planned. And bring the cash back here to this bunkhouse. You understand? Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had arrived at the Krebs Ranch a few minutes after Tom had gone into the bunkhouse. Leaving their horses in a shadowy grove, the two men made their way to the partly open back window of the bunkhouse with the idea of getting a close look at the man who had tried to surprise them at camp. After Krebs went to the ranch house, the Lone Ranger and Tonto returned to their horses. Well, it's after midnight, Tonto. I'm sure the posse has returned to town by now. We'll head for town. There's something I want to do. Easy, steady, big Easy, fella. Come on, Tonto. Get him up. The posse had returned to town and disbanded for the night. The sheriff and his deputy were in their office talking. Sam, too bad we lost the trail of those two outlaws, but we'll try again in the morning. Well, since you're on duty tonight, I'll, I'll get a few hours sleep. In the morning, we'll try it. Preach. Hey, what? The mass stormy and the Indian. I the door, Tonto. Uh, I thought you got more nerve than I thought. I gave the posse orders to shoot you on sight. Yes, so we learned. We can't afford to lose time avoiding the posse. I came to explain to you. There's nothing you can say, mister. That Does uh, this mean anything to you, Sheriff? <laughs> a bullet. Why should this mean anything, mister? If it's meant as a threat, I... Wait, wait, hold on. This uh, silver bullet. That's right. Hey, I don't savvy this. Uh, Jiminy, I do. I've heard of the masked armory who carries silver bullets and rides with an Indian. Todd and I came down here to help capture the outlaw gang that's been operating nearby. We thought you and the Indian were part of that gang. I told you before, a ranch hand from Krebs Place came to town and reported you tried to jump him earlier tonight. He lied. We were sleeping in our camp two miles out. He tried to sneak up on us, but we managed to turn the tables on him. But why should he sneak up on you, I wonder? We've discovered he's one of a small outlaw gang who hides out at the Krebs place. Oh, uh, do I still need this gun? <laughs> no. Oh, put it away, mister. I know who you are now. Good. Look, there must be some mistake about what you just said about an outlaw gang hanging out at Krebs place. Louis Krebs is a careful man. He's a town banker. And he'd know all about any armies who were working for him. Krebs is leading a double life, Sheriff. The leader of that gang, as well as being the town banker. That's mighty hard to believe. Well, it's true. There are five in the gang, including Krebs. We followed the man with the nicked boot heel. He met the others, and they planned to rob the stage tomorrow. My thunder will catch him red-handed, then. You won't get anything on Krebs. He won't be with them. Do you have any suggestion as to how we can get evidence against both the gang and Krebs? Yes. I suggest you let them rob the stage. But first, if you're willing to send a telegram. 
The following day at noon, the gang, without Krebs, waited in Indian Canyon behind some large boulders. Soon they saw the stage coming through the canyon. Here it comes, fellas. Let's go. Get up! Come on! Come on. Come on. Come on. Than we expected. Yeah, the guard's sitting there with his hands up. Yeah, let's get that cash box. Sure. We'll tie it on my horse. All right, driver, get that stage out of here pronto. Get going. Sure, sure. Get up. Yeah. Lewis Krebs waited impatiently for the men to return from the stage robbery. Finally, they came into the bunkhouse one after the other. And yeah, now get that box open, Krebs, and give us our shares. We'll have to shoot off the lock. Go ahead and do it, Fred. All right, stand back, everybody. Yeah. Well, that did it. I'll open the box. The four other men crowded around the table as Krebs lifted the lid. What? A look of consternation hey, spread over their faces as they looked inside. Hey, looky. There isn't any cash in the box. Just folded newspapers. They must have had the cash in another box. We've been tricked, Krebs, you fool. Somehow they must have got wind of your plan to rob the stage. Yeah. Hey, hey what? The, the sheriff and his deputy in the doorway. Use your guns, me. I said reach. Oh. I'll fix you, sheriff. Oh. Somebody shot me. It came through the window. Sure. That's the mask oh. number you tried to finish off last night. There's the Indian at the other one now. We've got you all covered so you haven't got a chance. Drop your guns. Drop them. I knew that skinny coyote Krebs would get us into trouble. I warned them about that mask, men. All right, pick up their guns, Toto. Uh, you get them. Our plan works, Sheriff. The cash is safe. That express company money box on the table proves they held up the stage. Yeah, and it clinches a case against Krebs, too. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get plenty of evidence once we get them in jail and get them talking. Otto and I are not going back to town, Sheriff. We're heading for Austin. Well, I reckon the deputy and I'll manage to get these two crooks to jail after he gets them handcuffed. Good enough. Adios, Sheriff. Come on, Otto. Uh -huh. Well, I got handcuffs on them all, Sheriff. Fine, deputy. We'll get them on their horses and take them back to town right now. Hey. By thunder, Sheriff, you let those two get away before we found out who that masked man is. I don't hand us that stuff. You know as well as we do. He's a lone ranger. Lone ranger? Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendel Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.